Good morning, everybody. Take a look at this view of this park I'm in right now. It's just like one of the most awesome places in Sarasota that I can think of for sort of the tranquility factor of about a nine. Check out this uh, little tiki hut over here. This is a uh, part of part of the school campus, a college campus, sort of considered a, a little bit of a public area where they don't mind if you come out, but also a school area. There's a neighborhood right in the right to the uh, <laughs> out <laughs> out this way, out that way. There's a neighborhood, and they're also cutting down tree limbs also too. So I'm not going to spend too much time out here because they're uh, taking down these limbs that have broken. See some limbs coming down over there. This uh, particular area, this piece of sort of uh, nature, is a, a really unusual area where you've got this beautiful kind of forested area with the Sarasota Bay out here. All the animals. I think all the animals are like. Uh, can animals be like giddy? Ooh, I don't know if this is all wet out here. But uh, certain times of year, you can sort of tell the animals are stirring because of the change in weather. It seems like to me, this is my unofficial opinion about things. But it's been, it's been pretty sweltery, I guess you could say, lately. This, is, uh, this area is Sarasota Bay. Ooh, there's a bunch of... Uh, crabs here right there uh, horseshoe crabs we talked about these periodically at certain times of the season you'll see these horseshoe crabs come up on shore I don't know if they're still alive or not if they're doing yeah that one's alive look at horseshoe crabs they're like uh, <laughs> they're like imperial droids I guess they're mating there looks like you got a, a little one on the back I think it's a male and a female this is the first time I've been able to shoot something like this they must have had to have uh, crawled a long way. Here's another one. Ooh, there's a a sea urchin right here. Wow, we must have had some big tides. You see that thing right there? That round thing? This? That's a sea urchin. That's pretty cool. You don't see those very often. They have like little hairs. Those little round balls. They have like little hairs on them. Hope I, this is not a good place to stand. I'm right on this seawall here. Anyway, they've been having these things called king ties, which I've never really heard that term before. Um, a king tide apparently is a, well, from what I, I'm gleaning of the news, try not to fall in, a king tide is a very high tide, and I've heard it's been causing flooding, which is weird. I haven't seen it, my personally. I saw it on the news. All right, so this is sort of like a little a little lagoon, I guess you could say, that's in this park. I think this must have been originally been some kind of boat basin or something like that, because you see where there's like a wall down there and then there's like a space between the wall. Like maybe this was dredged out deeper and somebody parked their boat in here. I'm not really exactly sure, but it's kind of an unusual little area. Um, we're right next to the property, former property of Charles Ringling, who was a... Uh, one of the Ringling Brothers that, uh, the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus, that was one of the brothers that, uh, ran and started the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus, such a long name. And also John Ringling's house is the next property over. Oh, some noisy, something noisy in the water over there. Some noisy fish. Anyway, this is a very cool area where, um, you can see like a lot of these, I think it's called a white ibis, these white birds. And you see pelicans out here and you see all these beautiful birds. And you can also see when it's the right time of the season, you'll see uh, crabs mating out here, these horseshoe crabs. It's also just, I'll get, give you a second just to listen to the quietness. It's very quiet. All right, so we're working our way down the the Ringling, like I said, the Ringling uh, Brothers houses. I would 
they're they're actually called their winter houses because I think they I'm not sure I know John Ringling lived in New York but I don't know about Charles Ringling but this uh, from the sun's at a bad angle right now but this is sort of a pink marble home I guess made out of uh, block or something and marble pretty amazing um, I can't think of the exact history of it right now but um, Somehow, when Charles Ringling died, and then his wife either passed or decided to sell the home, it was bought by the um, college, this home. And what, and what you're looking at is, the back of this looks weird. It looks like they have some kind of like curtains up over the windows. I don't know if that was because of the storm or what, but I know the sun's not at a, at a great angle right now. But there's actually two parts to this house. There's the main Charles Ringling, then there's like a a walk over to a smaller house which I believe was his daughter-in-law's or his daughter's and son-in-law's house so it was like a it was like two houses connected in the middle still an amazing property you could you could look up Charles Ringling home online and probably see some nicer pictures occasionally I, I post those on Instagram but there's a, a beautiful dock out here on Sarasota Bay. The water's not too nice out here today for some reason. It's kind of like muddy looking. I don't know. But the weather is just about perfect. And so you have Charles Ringling's house, which I'm going to place it, it's probably built in the 20s. And then you've got right next door is John Ringling's unbelievable, crazy, detailed, elaborate mansion with this. Uh, I'm trying to think of how to describe it. It's the, it's a, <laughs> I'm, I'm stumbling. It's a Venetian revivalist style, but more than that, it's very super ornate with all these little tiles and decorative things. It's pretty famous if you look up. There's there's probably a hundred videos out there on YouTube and in and, and elsewhere where uh, you can see people doing videos of the. I haven't done. An interior video it's something that I, I plan in the future where I have to um, contact the people at Ringling last time I contacted them they were busy with some board meeting thing so that was a bad timing thing so I just have to sort of hunker down and schedule a private tour that's what I was hoping to do is get I've actually been inside I just didn't really because I didn't I wanted to focus on the experience rather than filming it all I um I didn't do a video of it but it's a pretty amazing uh, place it's it's beyond explanation is how I describe it it's you have to see it but let's go take a closer look here but before we do that let's take a look at these uh, the statue the headless statue over here for some reason there are some statues there are statues all over this property which I think is something 20 acres large there's a statue of a guy with no head Here's a dog, a lady. She almost looks like she's wearing some kind of chef's hat or something. I don't know what kind of hat that is. Probably some 18th century, 19th, 17th century thing. He looks like he's got a little a lute or something. But if you look around in the nooks and crannies, sometimes you'll find these statues out here that are sort of off to the side, off the beaten path. Here's another statue. John Ringling collected a lot of statues, like hundreds and hundreds of statues and they're all kind of dispersed. Some of them are a little bit broken, you can see. Missing some appendages. Here goes an airplane landing at the airport there. Of course, the sun is at the exact wrong angle. Whoa, and there's a giant bird right there. That just scared the heck out of me. That may be an osprey. I'm kind of blind because of the sun. Let's go take a look at the outside of the mansion real quick. All right, so what you're looking at here is John Ringling's home, winter home. I've seen pictures online of his uh, his normal, what would you call it, his summer home? I don't know what the freak you call it. Most people have summer homes. He has a winter home. Um, what you're looking at is kind of like, I don't know, that, I think that was a porch at some point. There was a porch, but now it's like, a, it, they said it used to be screened or something, and now it's a... Uh, uh, this is where you start the tour, I guess you could say. So this would be like the the back of the house, the back of the porch. Yeah. I don't know if you can call this a porch. It's more like a, a gigantic lanai area. But 
you can uh, sort of see. Oh, there's an osprey up there too. Look at that. Ospreys are um, like. Look at this guy. He's. Uh, looks like he's trying to get a mouse or something. I don't know. Can you see that? That's freaky. He's like hanging out in the corner of the building right there, making a lot of noise. Ospreys are uh, fish hunters, I think, mostly, I think, but I think they also eat, um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's weird, sort of hanging out in the corner there. They also eat mice and stuff like that and whatever else, but um, it's kind of like a Florida bird. Anyway, but let's take a look at a little close up of this. So all these windows are all um, different colors. Uh, what do you call this? Uh, stained glass, purple, blue, and green, and it's just like huge amount of detail in all these like things. There's like, wait, what is this? A cornice or something? You can see there's like all these flowers and a ram's head thing going on. I don't know if there's an occult relationship, but this, all these, uh, I guess these are doors. These are like doors. I guess in the summer you could, uh, you know, predating air conditioning, you could actually open up this, all these windows, because all these things have door handles. In the summer or whatever, or in the winter or whatever you want to say, they could open up all those doors and get like a, air. A lot of these homes that were built pre-air conditioning were designed with ventilation, so they had like you could see on the second floor they got lots of windows up here, windows, windows, windows all over the thing. And let's look at the uh, the tile here. So you've got like uh, all this crazy different colors of tile. Like it's like rust colored and gray colored, black, gray. You could see how it's like a repeating. At one point they had to do a major restoration because it was like falling apart because salt water basically just erodes everything. And like if there's any steel in here, it starts to rust and all that stuff. So they had to redo the house, I think in the 90s. And then like this whole dock area, which I, I believe used to be like, uh, there used to be like a big yacht here and he used to, he used to uh, uh, park the yacht in here, like a yacht basin or whatever you want to call it. That's why I say like out in front of, there's a, a former yacht basin on that other area, which is down that way, which looks like it was some kind of inlet for somebody to pull their boat in. And maybe that part of that's gone now, but um like I said, this is almost beyond description, this house. Look at all the stuff up on the top. All the, uh, I'm not sure what you call those things, but they're like little monuments or something all on the top. Pretty amazing. And you've also got, uh, every window has all this like interesting detail. There's something missing up here. It looks like there used to be like a little something there in the corner. Maybe they had to take it down because of the storm. But uh, rest assured, this is an amazing place. Like when you look at these balconies, the balcony has all this decorative tile. And uh, it's one of my favorite places to come out just and enjoy. There's some Gatorade right there. In case you need some Gatorade, you just come by and uh, grab a bottle, I guess. I don't know what's going on today very quiet out here so this is like one of my my favorite spots to to walk in or jog through sometimes I'll just I'm not very good at sitting I, I have a hard time sitting and enjoying like I can't just sit still so I usually walk through there's all these uh, there's these little banyan areas where these it's like a mini forest out on this side to the south of the house you can see right here, there's a big banyan tree. And I've talked about these many times. It's like one tree that branches out with all these roots that come down and it, it like makes more trees. So it's like one tree structure that gets crazy and branches out. But look at this uh, view of the bay. Can you imagine just uh, like living out here and having this view all to yourself? Like I said, it's some 20 acres this is John Ringling's property. And, uh, now it's it's like a museum and the house is a uh, it's a house where nobody lives and you can tour the house and it's uh, John Ringling actually gave it to the state of Florida and they have these beautiful grounds that you can come out and walk for free if you so choose to just take a just take a walking tour or whatever you want to call it. 
And now the, uh, the leaf blowers are starting. They used to have, out in this area, they used to, this side, they used to have a uh, medieval fair every year. And for some reason they decided not to do that, but it was so cool. I remember when I was a kid, I used to come out in this side, which there's like a big cleared area. Most of the property is, has trees and is like uh, forested or whatever you want to call it, you know, gardens and things like that. But this side, behind the John Ringling, uh, John Ringling's museum, is this open area and it used to be just a flat field and I don't know if like generally in past in the 30s so and then he gave his home so I don't, I don't know what happened in that period from then to now exactly except this was always a big open spot so they used to have the fair here and they would have like the combat the armored combat out here it was so cool. They had have all the booths. If you ever been to a medieval fair, you know they had the booths, the food booths, and all the entertainment it used to be in this area. So straight up here, that big building often is the Ringling Museum, properly called the John and Mabel Ringling Museum. If you want to go look it up, it's like it's like the Ringling.org. It's just an amazing place out here. Um, I wish uh, Instagram would or Facebook or somebody would invent some kind of way that you could like smell a vision or something or feel a vision so you could actually one of these days some smart guy will come up with a, a virtual reality they're working on that 3d that whole th was a 360 degree where you can have a 360 degree camera but it's like super expensive so you can get the whole view but it'd be really cool if they had some kind of smell of vision here comes a plane coming into land the airport the airport is like straight this way so he's uh, taxiing or whatever you call that getting ready for landing and they come in low over the grounds to land at the airport which is I don't know an eighth of a mile that way anyway so I just wanted to since I was feeling in a good mood when I left my house I wasn't in a good mood but as soon as I got out here the quiet tranquilness and beauty of this area made me want to make a video and of course share it with you guys because just the amazingness that this actually one more building I wanted to show you just real quick so this mansion is right next to the John Ringling mansion this property belonged to I can't remember the name of the guy unfortunately it belonged to here's another uh, horseshoe crab I wonder if this one's just alive no I think he might have passed away horseshoe crabs everywhere Sorry. This belonged to a guy who was, I believe, a developer and a real estate guy who was popular on the 20s, 30s, I think. I can't remember the exact name, but a lot of these guys came here. They called it in the land boom, I guess you could say. Um, and they uh, bought these properties. They, they got these big tracts of land. And, ooh, some dolphins out there. Oh man, they're so far out, I, you can't see them. That's pretty cool. Right out by that white thing, which this phone, the zoom on this phone sucks, but by that white marker, there was a couple dolphins. But anyway, this place, like I said, is pretty cool because it hasn't been um, completely redone again, and it's sort of like old and aging. And it reminds you of like a movie set because it's a little uh, falling apart, I guess you could say, and it's kind of cool because you see it in a way, I guess, that you don't normally see places that are like um, tourist attractions or whatever. They're all certain sparkly and clean and it's a little bit uh, a lot of plane activity today. <laughs> I'm trying to think of how to describe this. It's a, um, it's dirty and it gives you that feeling of an aged old mansion from the 20s, which is what it is. It just hasn't been redone. I don't know why, but it's still pretty cool um, to come by here. You're seeing it in more, I, I guess you could say, in an original state. If they were to redo this, they would probably replace all the windows and you wouldn't get to see it. It's original condition, I guess you could say like that. Like, the, like uh, some of the newer mansions, because of uh, energy costs and air conditioning and going green and all that stuff they have to replace the windows and they get new more energy efficient windows and they have to do this and they have to put air conditioning in. you don't see them in that original pristine state 
Um, I've done other vlogs. I don't know how you'd find it. I can't remember the name of the place. I'm sorry about that. But there was a lot of people, wealthy people, in this North Sarasota area that bought these tracts of land. One guy was Crosley. His mansion is, um, like, I would say, like, two properties down. Uh, Crosley was a guy that had a company that did electronics. And there was, like, the Crosley radio back in the old days. There was, like, Crosley. So he was a multimillionaire, and he bought a property. It seems like these guys that lived in New York or wherever in big cities would... Uh, go to Florida, find some area, say we can get this land for 50 cents an acre or whatever it was, you know, 20 cents an acre. We should go buy land down there, develop it, and that's what usually happens is, you know, wealthy developers come down here, they develop a area, they buy all this land, and then when people start moving here, they sell it at a profit, blah, 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 blah. It's the same all over America. It's just, it's the real estate story of Florida and all these developed, you know, people going out west to California. But, and as a result of that, we have all these beautiful mansions out here, this beautiful property, all these little squirrels running around. I'm just feeling really, really sort of uh, at peace right now, and I wanted to share it with you guys and do a little bit of a history lesson, too. I've done other vlogs. If you go back, I don't know, if you go back and search Ringley Mansion or something, you might find some of my other vlogs where I've walked through the property and done. But today was just is just... And amazing the weather is just right and everything and it's just a beautiful day to shoot and look at property I don't know what this thing is behind me it's some kind of sculpture it's been here for a long time it's a <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it it looks like an anvil okay here, this is the same plane that came by yellow and blue look at that I wonder if it's a uh, that's a um, student pilot if they're practicing like landings or something but if you know anything about airports, basically they're coming in to the uh, the wind, I guess. So this is the this is the landing pattern across here. Anyway, I'm running out of space. Hope you guys are good. I'm doing better. I'll see you guys later. Have a great week. If I don't see you, I'll see you in the next vlog. Have a great one. Love you guys. See you.